Today, I'm gonna to come in here and uh, create the little food plot back at the end of this field. I talked about it a little bit on that episode about how the farm equipment is too big now, they can't get back into some of these corners. And I'm gonna use the poor man method and I'm gonna create a little food plot back here at the end of this field. This should be a great place to catch that buck when he stages to come out to feed in the larger field. I'm not sure what I'm gonna have planted in the big field yet. I'm hoping corn, but I'm still a ways away from getting that done with all the rain that we've had here. But uh, it's perfect timing to put this poor man's food plot in. So let me talk about uh, what the steps are in producing these poor man plots. Uh, first off, it's, it's super important to know that you can produce these things or you can plant these things just about anywhere. You don't have to own land, you don't have to lease land. I know a lot of our viewers are, are doing this just on property that they have permission to hunt. Obviously you gotta ask the landowner if you can do it, but any little spot like this, you can go in with a uh, chainsaw or, or whatever you need and, and just kind of clean out the low brush. Get it exposed so you can see all the weeds and grass and then you spray it with glyphosate, which is the all-purpose killer. It used to be called Roundup, now the generic brand is glyphosate. Spray it, uh, get a good kill, and always in the past we've waited a couple of weeks and then come back and burned. Burn off all the residue, make sure we expose the ground nice and black so the you know, sun heats it up fast. You get, you know, when, you, when it rains you get really good germination. But talking with uh, John Barsotti at Frigid Forage, he recommends that you don't even have to burn it off. So I'm going to try that with this plot this year. I'm just going to spray it and I'm actually going to uh, broadcast seed my Pure Trophy Clover today. And I'm going to come back in a couple of weeks, check on it, see how it's doing, make sure that it's dead, you know, spread some fertilizer, you know, take care of the plot, you know, once I know that the seed is going to germinate. So the thinking is that any rains that come, any winds that blow, you know, the seeds are going to work their way down to the ground level. So you'll still get the good seed to soil contact when the grass dies falls down over the top of the seed you know that's going to help to hold the moisture in even more so i'm going to try it this year like i said always in the past my steps have been spray wait two weeks burn sometimes i'll then you know rough up the ground a little bit with a uh, like a landscaping rake those three foot wide rakes um, and then broadcast seed and then also broadcast the fertilizer and then pray for rain so i guess you got six steps but this time we're just going to say, okay, spray, broadcast seed, um, fertilize, pray for rain. So we got it down to four steps, no burn and no rake. Before I get started, I'm going to talk about what I brought along on this project. Uh, first is the seed. Like I said, this is the Pure Trophy Clover blend from Frigid Forage. I like blends because under any given conditions, you might have one or two varieties within the blend that do really well. You know, maybe it's a dry year and you've got more drought tolerant seed, or maybe it's a wet year and you've got something in the blend that adapts better to, to higher moisture, uh, different types of soil conditions. I know some areas are, you know, more acidic. Uh, there are, you know, the blends are better for that sort of thing. So Pure Trophy Clover, we need something to spread it with. And I've got this Earthway Even Spread. These things are about 40 bucks. You can buy them online. You know, they're, I've, I've run through a couple of them in my career here, you know, making food plots. They do a nice job. Uh, nothing special there. I've got a backpack sprayer. This one is uh, four, it's a four gallon version. It'll do a little over a quarter of an acre. So I've got extra water with, it's about a half acre spot. I've got an extra, uh, or, you know, extra jug of water here, another five gallons of water, and then the glyphosate. So I can mix up another batch for the sprayer uh, after I get done, you know, running through the first load. So that's, it's really all I need. I mean, there, you can do a lot more. You can get really fancy. You can use, you know, hand tillers. You can, you know, if you've got a garden tiller, that's, they'll definitely improve the germination of your seed. So that's really the biggest challenge that we've got with these poor man plots is to get the seed to germinate. You know, get that seed to soil contact, you know, get it so that that seed can get a root down before the, it dries out too much and kills that little seedling. So I'm gonna get started, uh, get, uh, get this sprayer on my back and, and dive into the project.
by the time I'm done, you know, hopefully you're inspired that this is not real hard to do. This is something that you can definitely do in the places where you hunt. It's gonna be a great spot for anchoring that buck into one place. Get him to stage right here before he heads out into that bigger field to feed. This is an eight and a half pound bag, which is good for one acre. And I'm gonna really bump up the seeding right here because of the fact that I'm seeding it into that standing uh, grass. So I'm gonna be at about twice the normal rate. So it's about, it's a, probably a little bit less than a half an acre, right around a half an acre. So I'm putting an acre's worth of seed into a half an acre. If I had this opened up where either I tilled it or got it down to bare dirt, I'd probably seed it maybe just a little bit over the rate that's on the back. But in this situation, I'm gonna go real heavy. That was a lot more work than I thought. I think I'm just starting to get old here. But these uh, poor man plots are all about putting in the sweat and not the cash. 